Hello everyone, welcome to Doctor Who. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Lincoln Echo. Moose! Hi. Exclaim Moose. Moose! <laughs> My V for victory arms. This is Moose. Thank you, Nico. Thank you very much for watching. Today we're talking about Fires of Pompeii, season and four. And if you close your eyes, oh, you nothing's changed at all. If you close, close your, your eyes. eyes, why don't you go ahead and hit us up with that uh, uh, synopsis? Psychic powers and stone beasts run riot in old Pompeii, but can Donna dare the Doctor to change established history? Wow, that's really short. That's it. That's okay. All. All right, it aired May 2nd, 2008. Oh, we should have had those. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get tattoos of eyes on yes. the back of our hands so that we can just do this every time. Sisters! Sisters, sisters, do-do-do-do-do-do-do, sisters. Um, <laughs> Who doesn't know lyrics now? I never know the lyrics to that song. Uh, it aired May 2nd, 2008, and it has an IMDb rating of 8.1 out of 10. Do you think that that was justified? 8.1 out of 10. I... Yes. I think that it was pretty I good. Think, yeah, I mean, it's a fairly good episode. Definitely. We both cried during it. Well, it's just because we know what happens later on. It's true. That's why it's sad. Very true. Uh, writer James Moran... Moran... James Moran, and Colin Teague is the director. Probably Teague. Teague, Colin Teague. James Moran uh, also wrote The Sound of Drums and The Last Time Lord, or Last of the Time Lords. Uh, Colin Teague, is this is his only Doctor Who episode, but he also wrote Cockneys vs. Zombies, and he wrote the screenplay for Severance, which is a movie in 2006. Steve. Yes. Uh, here's some trivia for you. Much of the episode was shot on this, uh, at the Cincinnati studio in Rome, Italy. This marked the first time Doctor Who had been substantially filmed outside of the UK since 1996. Revival uh, TV movie was produced in Vancouver, Canada. The set used were from the BBC HBO co-production Rome, the house of... Cecilius. Uh, I think it was Cecilius. Cecilius was originally the house of Juni. Yes. Zinacita. 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 You have to you have to do it with the This is Italian now. Yes, of course. That's That's how you speak Italian. Cultural appropriation there. Apologies to Italian that <laughs> may or may not watch us. I actually have a lot of trivia for this episode. Usually I only have three three points, but this time I have a lot more because of Pompeii. This episode uh, replaced a World War II set story called The Suicide Exhibition by Mark Gatiss. It would have involved a Nazi task force assaulting the Natural History Museum in London, which had been overrun by monsters. Later action would have involved the discovery of a secret chamber beneath the museum. My question is, the reason why I put this on there, my question is, why wasn't this uh, re- why, why don't we see this as an as a episode? This sounds like a really interesting episode. Well, they do so much during World War II anyway. Do they? I mean, they have, well, they have, okay. they have the Family of Blood, which is no, that's before World, World War I. One. No, but I, I, feel like, I feel like if you're going to go back to World War II, that opens a whole other can of worms of running into Jack Harkness. True. Which already, you know, the TARDIS doesn't like him. Right. Because he's not supposed to exist. Yeah, maybe that's... The reason why they don't do it again. And that would that would be my reason. Well, because they go back to kill Hitler later on. Right, but they're in Germany in that episode. True. That's Not in true. London, yep. where Jack is. And Jack waits for 70-some-odd years. I'm done. So. Yeah, that's that true. That would be my reasoning as to why they did not go ahead with it. Yeah. Uh, the Pyrovile were, were originally called Pyrovixilians. This was shortened to... Pyrovillians, then Pyrovile. And I think that they made the right choice on that. I would agree. Because Pyrovixilians, Vilixians, Vilaxians, Pyrovilaxians is a lot to say, as you can tell by me not being able to say it. The soothsayer that Karen Gillian played in Doctor Who, The Fires of Pompeii, which was in 2008, mm -hmm. was not considered by Stephen Moffat to be the ancestor of Amy Pond. 
Well, I will say in this episode, it is totally unnatural to listen to her with an actual Yeah, British she has a British accent, accent in this episode. Versus her natural Scottish. Yeah, well, she does. She's in, uh, what's that movie that she's in? Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. She was in Guardians of the Galaxy, and she had an American accent in that. Was that American? I think so. It wasn't Scottish, certainly, and it wasn't British. No. Yeah, no, she had no accent, so it was an was... American accent. Do Americans not have an accent? Well, you know what I mean. It's not <laughs> her regular accent, and it was weird for that, too. Well, yes, but that one I understood more because it's like this like cyborg. True. That's true. With a bald head. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Amy Pond, this is the first sci-fi for Karen Gillian, and certainly not her last. As we talked about, she was in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. So, there's that. Uh, a primitive form of central heating system depicted in this episode actually did exist in ancient city of Pompeii, yet not in the imperial capital of Rome. Ooh, historical accuracy. I like. I, I liked that bit of, awesome. of information. I thought that was really cool. Um, Petrus is a Latin form of stone, and dexterous is likely a malformed name based on the Latin dexter, which means right, as in right-handed. So the guy who had his right arm be turned to stone has his name mean stone arm, stone right right arm, which was what I uh, yeah. alluded to earlier. It's like, oh, a stone hand. I thought that was interesting. So, Fires of Pompeii. What did you think about this episode? Oh, this episode of Fires of Pompeii. Um, I do enjoy this episode. Mm -hmm. It's by far not my most favorite episode. Certainly. Um, but it's, you know, nicely mashed somewhere in the middle um, there. And I love the, I love the opening bit when um, they're all like, look at us in Rome, 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 Rome. And Donna's like, hey, that's written in English. Yep. Uh, are we in Epcot? <laughs> Are we are we in Epcot? I like I like the uh, explanation that they give for what the TARDIS does, the the chameleon circuit, as you as it were. Um, it translates both language, written and verbal, into English, into um, British English specifically. So they're they're in they have British accents in Pompeii. And then going off of that, I just I love how she tries to actually speak Latin. Then yeah, and the guy says, "No Celtic, no. no. Me no speak Celtic. No Celtic." The soothsayers in this episode were interesting, and I think that they really set the scene for uh, episodes later on in the the story arc, where the the right arm guy says she's returning. And uh, Donna, there's something on your back. Yes. About later episodes where we discover that Rose is, in fact, returning, um, which we did see in the last episode. But we hear a little bit of a, of a, of a what in the world? She's digging. She's <laughs> making her bed. We, we hear the soothsayer say there's something on your back, which is in a reference to an uh, episode coming up later called Turn Left, where she does have something on her back, which I think is an interesting uh, episode to point to, specifically. What do you think of um, the, the, way, the way that they predict the future? I guess we can't study, but even more, even more still, Battle of the Sexes of Susain. Ah, yes, the... Man versus woman. Women's... Women's... Uh... A cult of Sybil. Yeah. What what does the guy with the with the arm say? Women's visions are are limited and dull. That's yes. that's what he says. Kind of going, we, we we watched Mulan the other day and they the uh high priest guy says, uh um women are never going to amount to nothing. They're never gonna worth be worth nothing. Kind of similar aspect to that where they assume that women can't do something and they're proven wrong quite rightly because obviously women can if if men can soothsay based on the parameters that are going on here women can soothsay too because they can in inhale the same rocks as men can um what do you think of of these extra tricks i'm keeping this in by the way what do you think of our aliens in this episode? They're very Roman. They have the Roman 
head headgear. They have the mm. helmets, and I thought that that was kind of interesting and and appropriate to the culture, because then maybe that was one way of them camouflaging who they really were. Mm -hmm. uh, like, oh, I'm going to put on this Roman helmet, so you think that I'm one of your gods, and but. I have this helmet. I'm Roman. I'm Roman. I have a helmet. Do 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 do. I have a shield, and I'm wearing greaves. Never, never mind. I'm made of, made of magma, and not related to the, your god Vulcan. No, I really did like this episode. I thought that it was it was good. I liked the fact that the doctor went back and saved the family. Mm -hmm. I thought that that was very, uh, very appropriate and very. Uh, very good ending. I love his comment to Donna that, you know, sometimes he does need someone with him. Welcome aboard. Yeah. Well, she already was aboard. But more so. Like, she moved she, in already. Yes, but doctor. she she proved her worth to him. Oh, in always. This episode. She didn't prove her worth already when she already had one of the thingamajigs and the thingamajigs and the adipose? Knowledge base, yes, but, but in... in Morality. Yeah, that's he, true. She proved herself morality wise in this episode. I would say so. Beginning of a beautiful friendship. Which gets proven. Spartacus. <laughs> I'm also Spartacus. Ah, Mr. and Mrs. Spartacus. Which is no! a running gag. Running gag in this season. They're not oh, married. Brother and sister. Yes, of course. You look, you look so, so much alike. They don't look alike. Why don't we go ahead and wrap up this episode? Delightful. We're good? Excellent. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Talk to Who. Again, my name is Link. Moose. Say I'm Moose. Why? I am Moose. There you go. Excellent. Tune in next time when we talk about Planet of the Ood. I believe that's, so that's the name. Ood. It is. Planet of the Ood. Planet of the Ood. Written by Keith Temple. Directed by Graham Harper. Graham, Graham Harper. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you later. Bye!